Hi everybody! We just got back from our trip to Colorado and we stayed a couple of nights in Wilcox where Mike works and now we're getting ready to head out to our next camping location and I think it's going to be, what did we decide on? Uh, Indian Bread Rock. Indian Bread Rock which is supposedly this cool rock formation that looks kind of like Indian fry bread so I've never look been there. like Indian fry bread at all. It's a hump. It's an Indian bread. <laughs> it's not just a hump. It's like a thing balanced on top of another thing and it looks cool. What? Have you actually looked this up? Uh, yeah, I looked at it online. Oh, well maybe you're right then. First stop, Ace Hardware. Because I was having withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you taken care of, buddy. Yeah, I need to go get my Ace Hardware fixed. Okay. Sh shaking. Just doing a quick little fix up on the arch door because it swings and slams shut when we're driving. So Mike's just putting a little hook and eye. <clears throat> I don't yeah. think this is called hook and eye. You know what? Give me a pair of pliers that's in that uh, box up front. Sure. I was kind of thinking the same thing. That the hook needed a little more bend on the tip of it. <clears throat> there. Now Perfect. it's Perfect. I think that looks like problem solved. God or what? That's going to be so nice. Yeah. To not have to deal with that thing slamming shut while I'm driving. Right. Making you jump out of your skin. I have a little heart attack every time it does it. <laughs> Every time. Next stop, Indian Bread Rock. This is the desolate town of Bowie, Arizona. Ironically, it's hometown of Rambo. Look. Rambo! See? That proves it. That's right. There it is. See? It's official. This is the birthplace of Rambo for sure. Now we know for sure. Look at the pistachio orchards. There's just tons and tons of pistachio trees in Arizona. Look at that, there's a train. He didn't honk back, dang it. No, we had a rapport being you. No, we had a moment there. I didn't know trains were so mean. We're surrounded by nuts. <laughs> Maybe you'll fit right in here. I know. Here's our turn. Nope. What is it called? Happy Happy, Happy Camp, Camp Canyon. Canyon. I'm thinking this might be oh, Indian gee, Bread man. Rock. We found the whole campsite here. Sweet! Oh, my God! It is Indian Bread Rock. I can tell by looking. All right, we need to unhook. And this is it. There's another camper nearby, so hopefully we're not bothering him too much. It's Indian Bread Rocks Recreation Area. I thought this was going to tell us something. It's basically giving us the rules of how to live here. Oh, day use and camping, vehicle use, firearms, trash. That's pretty boring. Indian Bread Rocks Picnic Area is the access point to the Dos Cabezas Mountains Wilderness which consists of 11,700 acres. Look at this big old pile of wood Mike has already chainsawed and chopped. <laughs> and we walked like, well, the amount of time, we probably walked a mile to bring this wood back, three or four, but I've been like four, four times now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, shout out to DeWalt, who, uh, that electric chainsaw is amazing. He loves that thing. It's so quiet, you go up there and cut some wood, you're not disturbing like the whole valley cut a bunch of wood and bring it back and buck it down into smaller sizes and what I should have done is cut a perfect log for chopping. Right? Nice. Didn't think about that. Look at the moon rising over the valley. Oops, I can't see it. Oh, there it is. 
pretty good day. That's Here's what it day. looks like here, where we're camped. There's Indian bread rock. Looks like Indian bread Maybe. on a rock. Maybe. <laughs> and there's Buzzy McBuss face. And look at this nutty bird on our mirror out here. He's like fighting with his own reflection or something. She chased the bird away. Now she's after something else. Okay, so we're on our way up to the Indian Bread Rock Formation and to see what we find up there. I did find a pretty decent pathway up there yesterday, so I'll show you the way I went. So this is where we are so far, halfway up the side of the hill, and this is what's before us. Ow. Everything in Arizona bites you. I know. Stand back. All the plants hate me in Arizona. Here's the same stick I used yesterday. <laughs> Oh, you went around. You okay. Find it. Oh. Come along the top of this rock ledge. Past the rocky outcropping. Hiya! And up this rock on the other side. Wait, that would be die. It's too dangerous. Come on, Mahones, you can do it. It's too dangerous. You can make it. No, I can't. Go on without me. They can probably hear us all the way down to the campground. <laughs> They're like, that guy's kind of a wuss. <laughs> Okay, we're pretty much there. Totally have to take these glasses off when I'm climbing over these rocks because the like, depth perception is so off. It <laughs> makes me afraid to try anything. That's funny. Oh, that is so neat. Yeah, we're here, you guys. We're underneath the Indian bread. So, somebody's got to tell us, but it seems to me that it would erode like this only because there was a ton of water rushing by this at some point. Yeah, and you can see the water erosion underneath it. It's so yeah. cool. Totally. Oh, I might be stuck. <sighs> I'm stuck too. How did I do this yesterday? Ow! Cat claw! Cat claw! Oh, dang. Look at this strata. Okay, now look over here, in case you're wondering about the whole Indian bread rocks, there's also matates underneath the overhang of the rock up here. Which would suggest what? This is where the Indians made their bread, Indian bread, also known as tortillas. <laughs> not. It could just be fried bread. <laughs> They didn't fry back then, honey. How do you know? So there's Were six there? of them up here that I have seen. And then look at the water erosion back here. Isn't that crazy cool? So you're the fire, you're the flare, you're the song inside my head. And I will taste every note, feel so good. Inside my head And I will taste every note Feel so good when you're in my head And it's the road I figured And the curves I've been living The flag I'm given a signal Pick me up, pick me up And 
we're going back down now. But this is looking a little more treacherous on the way down. Oh, like, you're sissy where's the path even? <laughs> There's a path here? Don't fall in the cactus. So I found something like something is very interesting when you're up there and you can see all the different like rigs around us like there's a lot of what appear to be not campers these are like van lifers yeah and people living in yeah. their rigs not just camping for a weekend yeah there's like a lot of them out there yeah and then the other guy was telling us how he's been living like that for eight years yep and there are two neighbors here on either side yep that was an excellent hike what we lacked in distance we made it for an elevation that's right oh my gosh you guys are not going to believe the campground drama we had today. And what horrible vloggers we are. Well, okay, here's the deal. This story involves the red and blue flashing lights of law enforcement, and you can't just, you know, pick up your camera and be like this when they're, like, yelling at you through a loudspeaker to come out your door. That totally happened, actually. <laughs> not even kidding, okay? I'll start, you finish, right? All right. We're sitting here minding our, our own business in the morning, having our coffee and watching uh, a sh um, an episode of someone on YouTube that we watch. And all of a sudden I'm hearing this loudspeaker. I can't really like make out what they're saying, but I'm thinking in my head. I thought it was on the tape. I thought it was on yeah, the tape. Yeah, I'm thinking in my head, this doesn't seem right. Why is there a loud? But it was loud coming from over there. Yeah, it was like, why is there a loudspeaker on this video where they're up in the mountains? This doesn't make sense. And then I realized, Mike is like turning and looking out the windows. I'm realizing he's hearing it too, and it's not coming from the TV. It's coming from out there. And they're telling us to come out of the bus. So I get up and I walk out like, cause I'm still not like, don't know what's happening. Right. At this point. I just, I just like, I'm hearing something outside, but I can't make out what they're saying. And I come outside and just as I poke my head out the door, then there's, two sheriff's officers like right over there and they're like step out of the vehicle come towards us and i'm like so i'm keeping my hands out where i can so they can see them at this point i'm just straight freaking out i'm like oh my god what has mike done that he hasn't told me about what is mike <laughs> getting in trouble for right now like i can't what has he done as i walk out the door i'm like are you guys talking to us yeah, right here that's what i was gonna say we forgot a part we forgot where mike opens the door looks out to see what's going on and all he sees is that that the two cops with rifles like ar-15 rifles out in their of their hands. vehicles and yeah. with the loudspeaker pointed at us in our bus and they're like Come towards us. I'm like, are you talking to me? <laughs> he said that. Are you talking to me? And they're like, yes, sir. I'm like, me? And they're like, yes, oh come gosh. towards the vehicle. So I start walking towards them and I recognize both of them because I work with them all the time. And Being then finally, so finally right. one of them like looks and goes, Mike? I'm like, yeah. Is that you, Mike? Is that you, Mike? And I go, are you guys f***ing with me right now? <laughs> Because I really honestly thought these guys were like messing Just with me like, oh look, something. that's Mike's bus right there. Let's go up there and mess with him. And so, no. but they're standing there with rifles like at the ready. <laughs> they're not pointing at me. They're just at the ready. And, and they're like, no man, for real. I'm like, what's going on? They're like, we got a call for a green van and there was gunshots and then a man moaning in agony. Those were their words of what was going on. And I was like, immediately at this point, I jumped in. I was like, oh, oh, there's a green van farther up this road. <laughs> like, yeah, I for started like the directing the last them. few days since we've been here, at one point, this, this, this rusty creeper van, like, comes by. And this dude, he's, like, real raggedy looking. Like, you know, you just, well, sometimes you kind of look at people and you don't want to judge them. But you know, like, this guy's probably up to no good. He judges them. <laughs> yeah, I profiled that day. I just profiled he, him. The well, he did. I'll tell you what he actually said that day was he said creeper van. It was. <laughs> because it was. it was like the whole bottom edge of it was completely rusted out. It was like an older, it was a creeper style, older style van. And the not, guy just. Not looked, like the kind you can stand up in at all. Like yeah. just a low top van. He just, the guy just guy kind of looked like somebody was like, if he had an opportunity to be up to no good, he probably would be. I don't know. I might be judging the guy, but. Like judging by what happened, I'm leaning in the right direction, I think. So uh, the cops then go up the road. So of course we're like, you know, total white trash neighbors. We're up on the deck with binoculars. 
<laughs> and then our neighbors yeah. from right here, you know, across the road from where we're camped, they came over too. We got them up on the deck. So we're all up there like being super nosy. Right? Like they're binos. <laughs> we're out like watching. The cops are all, we can totally see what's going down over there. It's probably a solid half mile from us, but the binoculars brought it in. To, clearly the cops are yelling at this guy. There was a lady out there pulling stuff out of a van and putting on the ground. And then a short time later, the van is leaving without the dude. Yeah, the lady left in the van and left the guy there with all his... So the guy's gear. still out there. Yeah. So the cops finally come back. Of course, they're going to learn my friends. So they're coming to tell me what went down. So we can like also story. to make us aware of like, you know, the, our, for safety reasons, like let us know what's going on. Yeah, he they, he was very cool that he let us know the guy um, was not armed, that he didn't have a weapon no or guns. a firearm. He had they a knife, he said. stuff and everything. But then they went out there and they told us that he's staying. They had no reason to arrest him. They didn't have any warrants or anything. But that they had got this big fight and then and that she was trying to get rid of this guy since she Tennessee had, yeah she or I think she had picked him up in Tennessee mm -hmm. right and then but she's been trying to get rid of the guy for the as, all this time ever so. since she picked him up I but guess but she might have been afraid to like tell him to get all his stuff out or something at any rate there was a perfect opportunity now because the cops are there like she took all his stuff and put it on the ground got in her van and she bailed so this guy's out there with too much stuff to pack out on his own out in the middle of the desert, like sad story for him. So anyway, <laughs> but that was our woo! excitement of the morning. Like, wow, talk about a weird thing to happen. Like, who, <laughs> when do you ever get called out of your home from a loudspeaker or a, out of your campsite by a loudspeaker? And like, all I could think of was like, that? I just left work. I went to Safeway. I got some stuff, and then I went to the post office, and then I drove, and like. What did I do to elicit response like this from the cops? <laughs> and it was really fun that all the other people camping nearby kind of converged kind of at our bus. Like yeah. we all had a big old neighborhood conversation going on out there. Well, anyway, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting morning to say the least. Yeah, I had of all the things that I expected to happen while living in a bus, this never would have been on my list of expectations I, I totally sorry we didn't get like killer video of all this uh, yeah. i did fly the drone still didn't get any video because i was actually looking for if there was any other I green think, vans in the area I to make we sure we were so like in shock from the whole situation even happening that we couldn't even think of grabbing the camera like yeah. it was the farthest thing from our mind we'll be so. better don't leave us yeah we'll get better we're we'll sorry get better, i promise so sorry. <laughs> this this new boon vlogging. It's harder than we thought. I know. We, we didn't know it was going to be this filled with drama. Lifestyle videos are so difficult. <laughs> just sitting here. It's our typical evening routine. You guys, we're up on the deck and Mike's flying his drone <laughs> because this is what we do now. We just get to play in our free time, which there's plenty of. And we're up here trying to spot that bobcat that we saw. Was that, that was two nights ago, huh? I didn't come up here last night while Mike was at work. But uh, we thought we thought we might see it in the same place that we saw it before, or in the same general area. Guess what time it is? Mail time! So this is our fire wood stove to just tell us if it's, uh, if it's burning in a, uh, what's the word? Uh, Efficient. Efficiently. It's, it just goes onto the thermometer this, on the, the stovepipe. Yeah. Looks yeah. like to hang it actually. So that's one thing I got and yeah. for our wood burning stove. And here's another thing we got for our wood burning stove, but we haven't even taken it out of the box yet. It took two people. <laughs> wow. Here we go. Wow, that's a beast. I really expected this thing to be, wow, really a beast. I know, it's I just, cool. I just expected it to be this flimsy thing, but this is uh, a really solid uh, piece of metal. Yeah. That will go right on our wood stove. You need to open the present. It's a present, it was wrapped, very nice. I know. You thought I was going to open it all nice. <laughs> <sighs> what do we got here? It's guaranteed forever. Cutco. Cutco. Leaning towards a knife right now. <laughs> I think you might be right. 
a new knife for our uh, knife rack. Here we go. Oh, oh wow, very oh, nice. It's a cheese knife. Wow, that's a very nice knife. Oh, I'm, I'm totally stoked. We need to get some cheese. Yeah, like I'm all made in the and USA. Wine. Thank you for this knife. This is a beautiful knife. I'm kind of a knife guy, so I'm just really impressed by this. Thank you. This is really, really nice. So let's see what this one is. We're going hunting. Right? <laughs> what does it say? Aloha. Aloha truss. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, there! It's a trust company. What's a trust? Oh, you can see it the, for houses. Yeah, the how? things that go in the roof of the house is called a truss. Nice. I couldn't think of what that meant. What's well, so this one's yours? Give me mine, because <laughs> this is my XL. I'm a fat boy, but I needed a long sleeve shirt. I'm wearing this today. <laughs> Thank you. Totally awesome, you guys. Is there anything else in there? Yes. <clears throat> Keychains. One for you. One for me. I can't read it though, I don't have my glasses on. Thunder Puffin. Oh, this is from Thunder Puffin Bus. Oh! Nice. nice. Yeah, we Very follow nice. you guys. Oh! I need to get my glasses so I can read everything it says. 10 things that could possibly be someone's favorite part of your bus. Okay. Shower, I think oh. would be like the number one. Oh. Uh, the uh, number two, I would say, is the deck. Shower, deck. Shower and deck are really big. Uh, three, I would actually lean towards the kitchen. Yeah, or it might be like um, certain features like slide out trash or laundry drawer or Possibly. something like that. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Oh! Uh, the turtle. The turtle in the shower, maybe? Right? Holy <laughs> Shower was the very first thing you said. I knew the shower. You it had to be. Right. The shower is so wonderful. I know a lot about you from watching most of your YouTube videos. I stand back and think, man, am I some kind of creepy stalker dude? <laughs> <laughs> nah, just another free-spirited guy wanting to take off in my half-finished schoolie. I feel you, man. I feel you. When I saw the excitement in your faces when you finally realized your dream, I was moved almost to tears. Aww. Aww. The contents of the box are not the gift. It should arrive, hopefully, in a separate mailing, which would be this. Right this. There, yeah. yeah. Okay. Orange shirts. A must when you're on the side of the busy highway for unknown reasons. Oh, my gosh. He was really thinking of, like, our safety. Right. For when we have to go out, if we break down on the side of the road or something. Thank you, John. Yeah. That was a really neat gift. very much. And very thoughtful. And, and thank you. That's really awesome. And this like, card is so pretty. It should be framed. So much, yeah. Oh, and we could hang it in the bathroom. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So, Carrie's, Carrie's stuck in editing mode today. And uh, I'm going up there. It's part of my lose this fat, get fit plane. And it's adventurous and awesome, so let's do this. I'm coming up on this rock right here. It looks like a signpost. <laughs> like <laughs> past the drone risk or beyond this is something, something. There is uh, the rock we were at the other day. This seems to be the easy way to get up here. Just a little climb. And there's the peak we're going to. A lot more altitude than we're at now, that's for sure, but whatever. This is good for you, right? It's crazy, like the, the natural rock features. At least I think they're natural. I mean, for, for all I know, they might be like, Indian shelving or something. <laughs> Though <laughs> I'm leaning towards natural formations. Well, I've reached kind of the base of my big climb here. It's actually not as steep as it appeared from a distance, but uh, it's still <laughs> it's still a climb for this old guy. This is where I'm at. 
This is, it looks like we're right just where water has fallen down this for a million years. <clears throat> All the way down there, kind of right there is where Carrie is. You come out the front door and look up, you see that big bald face kind of to the right with yeah. a black line going up it? I'm about to climb it. It's like just a million years of water run off here. Ooh, look at that, crazy, oh, oh my calves are burning. Oh my gosh, Mike is going on a hike and a mountain climbing experience. I think he's right there. Oh, he's going up that crack. He's climbing up the crack in the center of that rock. He's going to keep climbing all the way up to the mountaintop. Oh, look, I get to take a break. Woo! Carrie said I'm like halfway up, which is kind of gutted me a little bit. I really felt like I was three quarters of the way up. <laughs> this plant here. It's called Sotol, and you can see it's yellow stock laying down there. It's spelled S-O-T-E-L, Sotol. From what they say, it was used by Native Americans to make uh, bows, also to make fire drills and walking sticks and stuff. So um, I have successfully made a fire with a fire bow drill using that plant. Anyway, it's not a history lesson. We're climbing a mountain today. Let's do this. The sheer workout of this, just walking up on your toes is, oh, a lot of work for me. Oh, my calves are gonna pay for this tomorrow. I think this is it. I don't think this is a false summit. <laughs> I hope there's a different way down. <laughs> okay. Here we go. All right. Yay. Awesome. Oh my gosh, you guys. Mike sent the drone to let me know he's on top of the big mountain up there. See how there's a boulder to the left and a mound to the right? I think he's on top of the mound to the right. Yeah, that little tiny figure you see up there is Mike. That's so crazy cool. I can't believe he made it all the way up there. Flying low under the radar Like a night hawk stealth plane you are Hiding out in the shadows, keeping from the light of day. Nobody should ever have to live that way. You know, you reach little places like this that have like, you know, a magnetic draw to get on top of something. And, and when you get here, you realize you're, you're probably not the only person that's been here but you are one of very few that's been here. And it's just so cool to think that, you know, 200, 300, 500 years ago, that little barefoot kid was standing up here looking out over all of this. It's pretty spectacular. Amazing out here. It's so beautiful. I've been sitting up here for, I don't know, an hour maybe. 
and just like just taking it in and and seeing how truly insignificant we are as a, a single person on this gigantic planet in this solar system in this galaxy in this universe we are pretty insignificant well all things good all good things have to come to an end and now i have to go down and it's all treacherous and everything so let's begin i want to see a sight for sore eyes that's a sight for sore eyes but my eyes aren't really sore my legs are all scratched up my feet so that's a sight for tired legs i guess Hi, my hound. I made it. Oh, man, I came down the mountain in a different way. It was the wrong way. I was climbing through rock caves and it was hell. Pretty strenuous. <laughs> it was pretty strenuous, yes. Cool. Thanks for going along, guys. Okay. It's moving day. We have to move from our awesome location here at Indian Bread Rocks, but I'm sure we'll be going to an equally cool location from here. So I'm gonna help Mike. Oh my gosh. I meant to pick up the, the radio and I picked up the phone instead. I didn't grab the radio. I grabbed your phone. <laughs> what do I do with it? It's right there. Oh, right here. So small. Watch out, some cool. Okay. Right. You're right up to those bushes right now. Almost. Okay, you have to tell me before I do that. Oh, you're not that close. I'm going forward. It didn't always work on both of them at the same time. Okay, you guys, say goodbye to Indian Bread Rocks. For now, anyways, go ahead and say goodbye to the steer while you're at it, too. This is the longest we have stayed at any one location in our bus as of yet. We stayed the full 14 days that we're allowed to stay on BLM land at this location. Yeah, it was really awesome, too, and I'm hoping the next place, because we've never actually been there, but hopefully the next place is as good as this was. We thought this was going to be a dud. It wasn't. No, it was spectacular. I thought we were afraid that it was going to be like really desolate. Um, what is that called? Like barren, barren and desert land. Yeah. And it wasn't at all. It was just beautiful. So we're actually looking forward to coming back here again. And there's some new places to explore the next time we come back here. So don't think that you've already seen everything there is to yeah, see at this location. Sure. <laughs> yeah, there's some ruins nearby that we're going to be checking out next time. But for now, we're on our way to a new location and uh, let's do this. Yeah. Thanks for uh, coming along for the adventure as every time that you guys always do. We really appreciate that you guys are always there for us in our videos and in our comments. Like, subscribe. Do all the things. Go over Instagram. You better like me on Instagram or else. He gets bossy at the end, doesn't he? <laughs> all right, let's do this. Hey now, it's so